one of the first people to report the taro and darrow in these cavernous regions in which they dwell was Richard Shaver. This is the story of how seemingly on accident he was in contact with the taro or the darrow and it eventually led to a trip to a subterranean realm where the darrow and the taro were at war and he had contact with these beings and was given information which he reported to Ray Palmer with a 10,000 word letter called a warning to future man. Sometime around 1932 Richard Shaver was working as a welder in a Detroit auto plant. The welding gun on his job site by some freak of the coil field attunements was allowing him to pick up on his co-workers thoughts. Most people would say that that's schizophrenia but let's listen to a little bit of his story. Hey Joe Raditz bring that dolly over here. I glanced up casually from my spot welding then blinked in puzzlement as my eyes took in the immediate area around me. The voice in my ear had come out of nowhere. No fellow worker in this Detroit auto plant was near enough for his voice to be heard by me. What in the devil? I muttered and then shrugged in mystification and turned back to my work. The moment I snapped the switch on my spot welder, the voice came back again. No damn well this rivet won't fit. Don't tell me I don't know a 9.32nd hole when I see one. The voice died away and he had listened intently for a little bit and it didn't come back. Well, Shaver was wondering about this Raditz guy because he had heard that and he figured that he was hearing people's voices from around him. And he ended up going to the clocky, the guy who keeps the time. And he said, do me a favor, clocky, he asked. And he said, sure thing. But anyway, he uh, asked him if there's a Raditz that works there. And the clocky ended up saying, you know, I'll, I'll look as long as I don't have to get up off my butt here, you know. And so he look, he spins around and he runs his finger down the old time, time uh, cards that you used to have to put in the slots when people clocked in. And he did find a Raditz, and the Raditz guy worked on the other end of the building, and he was a riveter. So he had heard this guy talking about these rivets, and he also heard the guy's name being in conversation with one of his fellow workers that was close to him. So he realized later that these uh, field attunements was picking up people that were had their equipment wired to the same home run or the same wiring system that his machine was hooked to. So all the people on that one line that their uh, instruments or their tools were hooked to that one electric line that he was hooked to, he was able to pick up their voices and he was able to hear them according to him because of this freak in the coils uh, of his welding gun. He did also ask that he could get this welding gun of his fixed and he was going to submit it to have it worked on because he told the clocky that there was something wrong with it. Well, before he could get the gun fixed and uh, he was back at work and he noticed that he started picking up on a conversation that was not his co-workers and it was a torture session that was coming from a cavernous realm from these Darrow creatures. Well this started to scare him and he didn't know if maybe he was going crazy and he didn't like it and he didn't want to continue to do it so he ended up quitting this job and going on what they called in the 30s going on the bum. So he traveled around the country doing odd jobs doing his art doing different things like that and jumping on trains and drinking some wine and he ended up landing himself in jail. 
Well, it's while he was in jail that these Darrow beings, according to Shaver, started targeting him and the fellow prisoners in the immediate area were being targeted also. And then the story starts to get good and he starts to uh, have some contact here where uh, a woman called Nydia comes to his cell and well, we'll just have to go look at this story but he ends up making a trip to the cavernous region and supposedly spent eight years there so let's look at this story for those who are new to this subject matter I want to say this before we look at Richard Shaver's account of what happened while he was in jail I have had uh, extra dimensional being come into my room when I lived in Texas and he stuck a device to the side of my head he twisted my arm behind my back and he was laughing at me uh, and then a doorway opened up and a shadow being came into that doorway and then something happened that scared the Darrow and the shadow being off and it was a roar of some kind that came from the right side of my room and I didn't see this entity but it scared both of them and they fled so when I look at Richard Shaver's case I believe that he did have some kind of an encounter whether it was all an illusion or some kind of huge deception it's hard saying it's hard to sort these things out totally but I do believe he had an encounter with an extra dimensional being and it had technology at its disposal and it used it on him so I don't think he was totally crazy he may have had some kind of mental issues going on but it may have been caused by these Darrow's and Taro's that he says that he encountered so having said that is my disclaimer I know that Richard Shaver's wife said that he got saved in the latter part of his life and when he got saved and accepted Jesus as his savior that the torment stopped and he found peace so now let's go look at what happened to Richard Shaver when he was in jail the pains got worse finally I knew what it was but I didn't believe it it was people living in caves under and around the prison and the people's kids like to torment us prisoners not just pester, but real genuine torture done with some kind of x-ray. At last I got mentally used to knowing this, but I finally got wise to a couple of other sufferers from the unseen rays, and we would get off in a corner and discuss this thing. So I didn't feel so alone about it all. We all knew that something was very wrong about ordinary people's ideas of what the world was like. I realized that modern science must have developed a lot of secret things that rich people had got a hold of and were keeping from common people. But then Richard Jaber went on to say that he thought it was the communist at first and then he thought just with these rich people and secret government people had these uh, secret ray technologies but then he realized that he was wrong so after this about one o'clock in the morning something different happened leading up to this one o'clock in the morning experience he noticed that the rays that were being targeted toward him had changed from tormenting to a pleasure type ray so in some of these cases that we hear about with abduction and what have you that people talk about how they felt I felt this love when the thing touched me the gray or whatever but he noticed that this change happened and there was a mental telepathy kind of transfer where he knew that this woman named Nydia had uh, intervened for him somehow through this separate group of Darrow's which are called Taro's so there was a Darrow the bad guys Taro's the good guys and this Nidio was part of this group so it was about one o'clock in the morning he says my door 
on my cell opened. I sat up astonished. What did the screws want with me this time of night? But the turnkey stood just outside the door, a dazed, uh, confused expression on his face. I thought he was walking in his sleep till I saw him standing behind the transparent image, the half-existent projection. I had learned to love my girl of the secret people. So this was this girl who had uh, put a projection into his cell of herself. Now she is standing in an underground cavern at this ray machine that, tech, uh, that projects holograms. So when people talk about the blue beam technology and things like that, this here is uh, a way advanced kind of version of the blue beam technology that can make a projection from an underground cavern into his cell and she projects her image into his cell. Now Nydia from this machine that she is operating is able to hypnotize the guard, make the guard open the cell door and then the guard goes and opens the back door and then Nydia takes her hologram and leads Richard Shaver out of the prison, behind the prison, out through the woods, into a mountain that's behind the prison, and she leads him in through a secret entrance to a meeting with herself inside this mountain in a cavernous realm. And that is Shaver's first entrance into the cavern region, led by a hologram from jail. After Richard was looking around and he noticed some of these machines that she was using and the people of the caverns called them ancient mech. It was a technology that was left by the Atlanteans or Titans. They called them both. So when they left the planet due to radiation from the sun, then these abandoned people called Darrow and Taro basically used this technology uh, to help keep them alive. But anyway, as Richard was looking around, he asked where her people were, and she said that they were leaving them to themselves for their meeting, and uh, he should meet them soon. And then, in many ways, she said that the they are different from surface folk, and you must not let these differences disturb you. They are prepared to welcome you heartily. And because I love you they and they love me. But it is not our custom to admit surface people to our hidden ways. For they are so apt to fear us and to hate us and to be a danger to us. And she asked him to, re to meet them and not act repulsed or uh, shocked or anything at their appearance. Nydia also said that they had tried to appeal to surface dwellers before to ask for help to fight against these Darrow creatures that were threatening to wipe them out. But whenever they would appear to surface dwellers and to different leaders or what have you, they would always be scared of them and would assume they were devils or ghosts and things like that. And after that, she shows him and tells him about these uh, other Darrow creatures that are living devils, she called them. And uh, she had a machine which they could look into and she could point it out into the distance and uh, it would pick these uh, devils up. And uh, Richard Shaver was very shocked when he saw these other Darrows because they were doing uh, torture type things and, and involved in some very, very evil type things. And then she showed him a T-log machine, which they could point up through the vast rock layers and they could read people's minds from miles away. So they didn't really read books or anything like that. They did have some books there, he said, and different things from even some modern type books because they did make trips to the surface, but 
they could read people's mind and they had what they called thought records even from the Atlanteans so she puts him on a machine that where he could uh, learn through these thought records and it would be like being the other person the Atlantean it would be like living that person's life for a little while and then you get all these records through the thought records that they had recorded into these machines and then he was to learn these different machines to be able to use as a weapon against these Darrows that were uh, on the verge of attacking the group of 50 that Nydia lived with and these Darrows were constantly in pursuit of them and trying to kill them because they were against making people suffer and doing uh, the evil things towards the surface dwelling people and therefore he studied from these machines went through all these thought records and learned how to use these T-log devices and all the different weapon type stuff and then she showed him other machines that were used for pleasure or recreation and they were also Titan technology that were used even by the kids or the the adults and they were for more pleasure type things and different recreational activities and what have you so those were some of the machines that she showed him and then he Richard was about to meet the group of 50 that she was with and then they spent a lot of time scanning through the rock layers to make sure that these Darrows weren't getting close to them well according to Richard Shaver he spent about eight years with the tarot in these cavernous regions and they spent a majority of their time scanning through the rock layers and looking for these Darrows that might be raiding the Tarrows and Richard himself with them but over time the Darrows outranged them with the equipment and the ancient mech that they had and eventually the Darrows raided the group that Shaver was with and they supposedly or allegedly killed off everyone and in one account he said that he was the only one left alive and then there's another account that he told while in a in Delaware that uh, he was not the only one but there was only a couple left and so he ended up making his way back out of the cavernous realm by which way he came and he wasn't supposed to uh, let anyone know about this until he was uh, given permission by the tarot to warn uh, the surface dwelling people of the world about the Darrow and that is the reason why he wrote a warning to future man and gave it to Ray Palmer and he ended up changing that into a story which hurt the credibility of the information because Ray Palmer changed it into I remember Lemura and, and made it into a sci-fi type thing and it was supposedly a true story of this uh, Darrow and Tarot beings and Atlantis and Titans and stuff like that so it ended up hurting the case and most people kinda ran from it laughed at it and things like that but as I said before I seen one of these beings before myself and I know that it had some little device that it used on my head. I didn't see any uh, cavernous realms or anything like that. But it did have a, have a shadow being that ended up coming with it. And he had a, a device of some type that he used. So Richard Shaver, he encountered something. I don't think he was crazy. Maybe these beings about drove him crazy. But in the end, the Darrow raided them and killed off everyone and then later he wrote a warning to future man one interesting thought when I was on the radio show the other day the sharpening 
or a few months back. But he was talking about uh, the Indian god called Ganesh. And this is an elephant looking being. And I was wondering if the people in India or in the Hindu religion had encountered these Darrow type beings. And then also there was something in the book of Jasher at the Tower of Babel. There was three different groups of people who were up on this tower. And one of the particular groups got killed and another group was uh uh, thwarted in what they were trying to do but there was one particular of these three groups that was struck by God and they became as apes and elephants and I just thought that was a really odd thing to say because it made me think of Bigfoot and it made me think of Darrow's or this Ganesh and this particular Ganesh uh, thing from India is the god of obstacles and it seems to me that with Shaver or even what my encounters with uh, with them once there that I've had times where I seem to have these obstacles always coming up and maybe this is a demonic activity uh, or a fallen angel type being that uh, tries to throw obstacles out in front of you just a thought but Anyway, it made me wonder about Bigfoot, and it made me wonder about the Darrows. Now, also, I was thinking about Phil Schneider, who was involved in this underground base building. He was a geologist for the government, and he was involved in uh, tunneling and doing these things like at uh, the S-4 facility and you know, Groom Lake and all that type of thing. Um, but he uh, got in a battle in, uh, in an underground uh, base that they were digging holes for. He got lowered down in a basket and got into a battle and had his fingers uh, basically zapped off and, and it opened him up like a fish, he said. And he, he tells his story about encountering a gray type alien. But uh, Richard Shaver said that these Darrows basically live in these underground realms and uh, use this ancient mech and all kinds of different devices that can teleport things through miles of rock. You know, they can actually take matter and uh, teleport it through these uh, uh, miles of rock. And when they showed up in my room that time, somehow they teleported in and teleported out. So it made me wonder maybe if there was something going on there because he did have a device in his hand. Another thing that Richard Shaver said was after the Atlanteans left, they weren't going to ever come back to this realm. But the Darrow, since they and the Tarot uh, basically have confiscated all this equipment, they don't have any problem with human beings coming down and trying to take some of this uh, equipment and these uh, ancient mech from them so much. But I was wondering if our government is getting to the point maybe where they would do such a thing. But he said that the other, like greys and other type alien beings that are out there, whether they're extra dimensional fallen angels or whatever they might be, he said that they raid the cavernous regions with impunity sometimes. But he said it, it's not that big a deal because the cavernous regions are so vast that they could raid and take some of the ancient mech for 10,000 years and they still wouldn't get but about 10% of what is down there. So is that why our government spends so much money with Bechtel and some of those other organizations that tunnel and they do the mining uh, and dig these vast uh, expanses uh, miles and miles wide and also tunnels tunneling through and underneath all kinds of places throughout the United States under the oceans and many many different places are they running into this type of thing is this what Phil was talking about Mr. Snyder when he 
said that they didn't tell him about this and they knew that it was down there. Just some thoughts. I don't know everything when it comes to this kind of uh, material other than I believe in Jesus as my Lord and they don't mess with me too much. I, I think they try to jack with me a few times in my life for sure and maybe they still try some and I, I have had uh, a few encounters uh, but not nothing like the physical where they grabbed me and did that kind of stuff and you can see my encounters on my channel but anyway you all I'd like to hear your stories send them in to me at brentonsawn at gmail.com subscribe and I ask that you share these videos you can go to my channel click the Facebook button and go to my Facebook page mysteries to search and you can contribute to help me make these videos and help me with the ministry that I have to help people get free from these attacks and things like that and I get several cases per month where people call and they're in serious serious trouble but after we pray and I tell them a little bit about the Lord then they always end up writing me back almost always I say sometimes I don't hear from people but it's very rare but they almost always write me back and tell me how they have no more activity God bless you subscribe and I'll see you on the next video Thank you.